Hello guys, in this lecture we are going to learn electric circuits which is also known as circuit theory or CT. Important course in the branch of electrical engineering. We are going to discuss lots and lots of interesting topic. So don't skip any topics. Before entering the subject, a small interface, learn mathematics and science. Because this subject is based on problems and laws. For that calculation purpose, we need to learn mathematics. And as I told, we are going to discuss lot of laws. For example, Kirchhoff's law, Ohm's law are going to be discussed in this lecture. Use these skills and develop your ability to solve the problems. Now you can ask, how can I develop these abilities? For this, you need to work out lot of problems possible. Let's get into the topic. Introduction to Electric Circuits. It is the basic course an electrical student must learn. What are all the branches of electrical engineering? Firstly, power, calculations on power. Electrical machines that is generators, motors, and to control these electrical machines that is power control, frequency, or speed control. Electronic devices that is diodes, transistors, finally, instrumentation to measure the electrical quantities. These devices are used that is, voltmeter, ammeter, multimeter etc. These are the branches of electrical engineering which are based on this course. What is electric circuit? It is defined as the interconnection of electrical components where the energy is transferred from one point to another. Each component in the circuit is known as element. The circuit must have at least one closed part because only in closed path the current can flow. Here we are going to discuss when the components are interconnected how the circuit behaves. It is classified into two. One DC circuits, two AC circuits. We will learn this detailed in upcoming lecture. Firstly, we are going to discuss DC circuits. The outline of the DC circuits is shown below. The first is basic concepts where we are going to learn all the basic concepts regarded to this course and then the basic laws that is Kirchhoff's law, Ohm's law etc etc. Methods of analysis how we are going to analyze the circuits. Circuit theorems where we are going to study the most important theorems, operational amplifiers, capacitors and inductors, first order circuits and second order circuits. basic concepts let's take a simple circuit here the battery and the lamp are connected together through the connecting wires the current i is flowing through the wires so now the elements are battery the lamp and the connecting wires the battery has positive or negative terminals so the current is flowing from positive to negative terminal the electrical energy is converted into heat energy which makes the bulb glow this is a simple circuit so we can easily analyze the circuit now let's take a complicated circuit This is the schematic diagram of the radio receiver. Although it is a complicated circuit, we can 
analyze the circuit using some techniques this is what we are going to learn in this course how to analyze these kind of complicated circuits using various analytical methods and to study the behavior of these circuits as an electrical student we deal with quantities and their units at the same time our measurements should be easily communicated so that all the professionals can be understand easily for that purpose a common measurement language is used which is known as international system of units or si units let's take a look at the some basic quantities and their si units quantity basic unit and their corresponding symbol length meter and its corresponding symbol is small m mass kilogram small kg time second small s electric current ampere upper case a thermodynamic temperature kelvin upper case k luminous intensity kadala lower case cd charge coulomb upper case c we represent si prefixes by symbols those si prefixes are listed below so listen carefully multiplier prefix and their corresponding symbol 10 power 18 xa upper case e 10 power 15 beta upper case p 10 power 12 tera upper case t 10 power 9 giga upper case g 10 power 6 mega upper case m 10 power 3 kilo lower case k 10 square hecta lower case h 10 deca lower case d a 10 power minus 1 deci lower case d 10 power minus 2 centi lower case c 10 power minus 3 milli lower case m 10 power minus 6 micro mu 10 power minus 9 nano lower case n 10 power minus 12 pico lower case p 10 power minus 15 femto lower case f 10 power minus 18 ato lower case a these are the important si units and their prefixes to remember electric charge basically charge is a physical property of matter suppose if we take conductors here the charge is the free electrons one coulomb of charge c is equal to 1 by 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 electrons so which is equal to 6.24 into 10 power 18 electrons so so now 6.24 into 10 power 18 electrons are present in 1 coulomb of negative charge therefore from the equation 1 electron is equal to minus 1.602 into 10 power minus 19 c we learned charge now what is current the rate of flow of charge in 1 second the net flow of charge in 1 second is defined as current the net flow of charge in 1 second is defined as current that is the number of electrons transferred from one point to another in 1 second is called current how many electrons are flowing in a circuit is known as current for constant current i is equal to q by t 
constant current means if we measure current at any point in the circuit it will be same for variable current i is equal to dq by dt that is in a particular instant the rate of flow of charge is changing that is a variable current in words 1 ampere is equal to 1 coulomb per second for example let's take a water flow in the pipe for a better understanding here a man is holding a pipe in which water is flowing in a pipe 2 liters of water is flowing per second 2 liters of water is flowing in 1 second now compare it with an electric circuit which means liters is equal to charges so 2 coulomb of charges are flowing in a circuit in 1 second that is i is equal to 2 coulomb divided by 1 second so current is equal to 2 ampere from the example see the circuit the electrons are flowing from negative terminal to the positive terminal where the conventional current is flowing from positive to negative terminal conventional current means nothing historically it is believed that current is flowing alongside positive charge so still it is taken conventionally two coulomb of charge is flowing in the circuit electrons are flowing from negative to positive current is flowing from positive to negative which is known as conventional current as we seen two coulomb of charges are flowing in a circuit i is equal to 2 ampere two coulomb of charges are flowing in a circuit so here i is equal to q by t i is equal to 2 by 1 which is equal to 2 ampere to find the number of electrons flowing in a circuit we know that 1 coulomb is equal to 6.24 into 10 power 18 electrons therefore 2 coulomb is equal to 2 into 6.24 into 10 power 18 it gives 1.248 into 10 power 19 electrons are flowing in the circuit this is how we want to find number of electrons flowing in a circuit it may ask in problems how to find the number of electrons flowing in a circuit to find that generally we know that 1 coulomb is equal to 6.24 into 10 power 18 electrons so if it is given 2 coulomb 2 times 6.24 into 10 power 18 whether it is 3 coulomb 3 times 6.24 into 10 power 18 whether it is 4 coulombs 4 times 6.24 into 10 power 18 electrons this is how you find the number of electrons flowing in a circuit this is very important topic the charge transferred from time t0 to t at the particular instance t0 to t how much charge is transferred this is a question is may ask in problems for this where t0 is the initial time we may take t0 as the reference time at point from where the charge is changing charge changes at a particular instant the time is taken as the reference value the reference time is the t0 t0 is the reference time or initial time where the charge changes it may increases or decreases we already know that i is equal to for variable current charge is here changing so this is a variable current so for variable current we know that i is equal to dq by dt now take integral on both sides by taking integral dq is equal to integral t0 to t i dt therefore the equation becomes q is equal to integral of dq is q equal to integral t0 to t i dt there are several types of current that is charge can vary with time in several ways 
therefore the types of current are direct current alternating current that is dc or ac direct current dc the current which remains constant and do not vary with time is called direct current at any time you take the current is always constant the current is always same at any instant the current is always same this is known as direct current for convention such current is represented by the symbol i that is upper case i the graphical representation see here the current from the point 0 to t the current is same at any instant the current is always same this is dead current the current i remains constant with respect to time t as shown applications where are we using this kind of current the best example of dc current is charging batteries because we can only store the dc current only the direct current can be stored in batteries and automotive applications aircraft applications some low voltage and low current applications moving on to the alternating current ac the current that varies sinusoidally with time is called alternating current which means here the current varies sinusoidally this current is represented by symbol small i that is lower case i here see graphical representation see the graph here the current i is sinusoidally varying with respect to t such a current is known as alternating current applications household appliances like refrigerator washing machines most of the appliances using in our homes consume ac supply like washing machines refrigerator air conditioners and so on here see a small diagram in this in the first diagram the current is flowing from downwards to upwards so it is a passive direction so the current is 4 ampere in the second diagram the current is flowing from upwards to downwards so here the current direction is opposite to the before diagram so here the current is minus 4 ampere same amperes same amount of current same amount of charge but different direction so the sign is changing the sign is changing respect to direction of current as we discussed we take current flow in a conventional manner so conventional current means it always flows in the direction of positive charge so conventional current flow is in the direction of positive charge moment based on this the current direction is noted plus 4 ampere is flowing in one direction and minus 4 ampere is flowing in opposite direction